Lexi, I believe Zach has a quote of the day. Zach, I'm going to welcome you in here. Say, hey, share with us your quote of the day and then take us away. I think you're muted there, Zach. Can you guys hear me now? All right, cool. Well, thanks for having me. I'm excited. Um, you know, when I when I think about this quote, I, you know, just what what's become a life's work for me. I think a lot of times, you know, lack of being understood and lack of understanding, um, a lot of times get you inside your head. So. I like to just encourage people, don't believe everything you think. Um, and then, you know, for me, uh, you know, starting to follow a leader, um, as Shelly had mentioned earlier, you know, I lost my best friend uh, March 18th, 2015. And um, again, it, you know, in my community, it, it, it was just something that we, we don't talk about. Um, I don't even think that I've, I've ever even said the word out loud. Um, you know, if, if it wasn't for a movie or a book or something. And I think on that day, you know, while I was, I was heartbroken, I mean, I had to pull over, I, I, I puked. It was, uh, it's probably, you know, obviously the hardest thing I've ever dealt with, um, because you never think it'll happen to you. Um, you never, and this is a guy I talk to on the phone every single day. Um, so that alone, uh, presented some challenges because, how did I know, um, you know, I think I had to take a step back because it wasn't about me, it was about his family. And and I really was feeling responsible, honestly, and, and ashamed um, because I claimed to be this person and how can I not, you know, know that my best friend was hurting this bad. Um, that, that particular day, him and I had talked on the phone four separate times. Um, and, and there was a mini crisis that we were trying to work through and like most of our childhood, I told them, you know, I got you, I'll, I'll take care of it. Um, just give me time, I'm working, I'm in the middle of some trainings and stuff I can't get out of, so just give me time. Um, and for whatever reason, um, you know, he just, he didn't wanna wait on me. Um, and so I think the hardest thing for me um, was I had been diagnosed with depression probably 14, 15 months before that. Um, but again, the stigma around uh, depression, I just, I felt like it, it, it was tagged with weakness, um, like you were less than. And so I kept that a secret, um, which was probably the one of the worst decisions that I could have made because, um, you know, I don't know if any listeners have ever been severely depressed, but for me, um, I didn't really, things didn't look the same. My wife didn't look the same. The sound of my children didn't sound the same. Um, I just, I wasn't sleeping, um, and I wanted it to be something else. I wasn't able to accept that, oh, I'm depressed because society tells us you're educated, you make good money, you have a beautiful, healthy family, like you shouldn't feel these things. And so I kept telling myself, there's no way I'm depressed. Like the, this is just these, I pay all this money to see this therapist and she just has to tell me something. Um, but when Adam passed away, I sunk even deeper um, because I felt like had I been able, been confident enough to, to share with him. I mean, we talked about everything, everything, but that, how we mentally and emotionally felt. Um, and so a part of me just felt responsible. Well, you know, what was it that kept me from actually sharing what I was actually going through, um, you know, underneath that surface. And so, what happened, how Follow Leader got started, obviously everything that once I got the help that I needed, um, start seeing a therapist regularly, start talking to, to people who I know care about me. Um, I was back home in Naples, Florida, and I was just playing cards with some of my homeboys. And I, I just said, man, at the end of the day, like, I don't wanna just say we're brothers. I don't wanna say we're friends. Like none of us knew what Adam was going through and is that a reflection of us? Like, are we doing something that's making us not have real genuine relationships? Like what, what's happened? And so I was literally sitting at this long table and I just said, look, if we're gonna claim to be friends and brothers, like you gotta be real with me, you know? Cause if you don't want to be, that's fine. I can get up from this table and we can just be acquaintances, guys that went to school together, grew up together. 
but we no longer have this type of relationship. And, you know, sharing my heart right there at the table, um, immediately I had some, some of my close buddies share some things with me that I had no idea they were going through. And then this, this just switch turned on in my, in my brain. My heart was already tr- feeling something, but I, I wasn't able to articulate it. And so what happened when I left South Florida, that visit, um, you know, I wanted to come back and think of how I could keep Adam's name alive, keep his story alive, because what I noticed, especially a man, I can't speak from female, but a lot of men, man, we'll sit around and we'll talk about sports, how many women we can get, cars, uh, football. I mean, just we'll talk about a lot of stuff that at the end of the day, it doesn't really have uh, much substance. And But why can't we talk about how we feel? Um, and one way I got into a lot of people's hearts was talking about fatherhood. And then guys were opening up and then we we're able to really talk about how we were feeling and things that we were going through. And uh, and so I just sat down and I said, God, whatever you could, whatever I could do to prevent even just one family from feeling what the Hall family and all of his friends felt that day, I'll make it my life's work. Just help me. And uh, and the, the beautiful thing is, is it's just been one conversation at a time. Um, Adam, if you if you know Adam, he was he was so loving. It's so hard because I, I know the signs. You know all of these things, um, but man, a person can really really hide it when um, we have this stigma. I think that's what it is. He was so afraid to say uh, how he was really feeling because the stigma surrounding it would have made him appear to be opposite of what we all know um, him to be. But this kid, this man was literally um, the life of the party. Um, the, he would stop whatever he's doing to come help you. He was a protector, um, an amazing son, brother. Uh, and the way he loved my children, um, my nieces and nephews, I mean, he's just one of the best humans. And so for that to kind of, for it all to go down the way it did with him. Like, um, I know a lot of people say time heals, but like we're sitting, we're almost at six years. And if if I'm being completely honest, it hasn't gotten better, but to serve a purpose through his name um, are the type of things that have helped me um, be okay. Because like the song that we listen to, I mean, most songs, I I just miss them. Um, I still have his number on my phone. You know, it's, uh, I think it's just um, the hardest part. I just miss him. I just miss him, you know. And that's just the hardest part. It's just, it, it's permanent. Um, and, you know, I just, you know, I just, my kids don't get to see, you know, how much, how good he was to their dad. Um, you know, he, uh, sorry. Um, We're not, Zach. Um, he was just, he's just a, he's just a good dude. And it's just, it just sucks to know he was hurting that bad to where he felt like that was just the only option he had. And I just don't want anyone, I mean, I don't want any anyone to feel like that, but for that to be my best friend, um, it was definitely a gut check and just want to, you know, impact my community because I think it doesn't have to be your child or your brother or your son. It can be their friend and, and it's still traumatic, you know, and I honestly think about it every single day. Um, it's in movies, it's in music. It's, in, it's, I just think about it every day. Um, but more importantly, I just think about the type of boys that I'm raising. I want them to, to just, you know, pour good into the world and be good to people because you really never know what people are going through. And I think it was pretty just out there when, after Adam had died by suicide to 
just reading his phone, um, how often he was trying to deflect and just worry about other people. Um, because after the fact, there were some signs. He had some uh, suicide prevention pamphlets underneath his bed. Um, I think the hardest part for me is him and I had just started going through Ephesians together. Um, he passed away on a Wednesday. And um, so we we're in Ephesians 3 and he had told me, uh, sorry, he had told me um, on Monday, I remember something falling off the fridge and bending down and I had the phone and he had said, hey bro, you know that, you know demons are real. And I said, well, if you believe demons are real, so are angels. And I told him, I said, man, you're, you're in a you're in a new phase of your life where you're really trying to, to turn some things around. And it just made me wonder, you know, what what was actually going on internally. Um, and so when Follow Leader was started, man, I just wanted to get in front of people. I didn't care if it was a school, a business, a workshop, a gas station. I just wanted to get in front of people um, to kind of share, you know, Adam's story you know, my story and, and really just get people talking because uh, we have to talk about it. I mean, there's a myth that if you talk about it, you're giving them, um, you're giving them this information to go ahead and, and, and do it. And that's just not true. A lot of people want to know you care. I, 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 I'd like to believe had I told Adam, you know, hey man, like this is what I'm really going through. Um, it would have connected us. And I don't think connection through trauma is the best thing, but I think that when you're trying to heal, you know, connect through healing. I think that's a beautiful thing. And, and that's all I want to do. I used to think that I had to go back home to South Florida to do that, but I just want to do that here where my kids are, you know, where my family is, um, where I went to college, where my coworkers are, because um, there, I have not spoken at a place. I have not met a person that has not been impacted by suicide or depression. Like I just haven't. Um, and I think it's just important that people know they aren't alone. And when Adam passed away, I just wanted to be a voice for, um, you know, all those people out there silently suffering because a lot of people don't share and don't talk for whatever reason. And uh, I don't ever want to make anyone uncomfortable. I think that, you know, I was put on this earth for a purpose and I'm just trying to be intentional with that. Um, so follow leader is, is just a year into the game and I, I know that it's going to evolve into something even bigger and it's so not about me but about everyone else out there uh, suffering in silence and so I'm excited to just partner with our community and, and just normalize this conversation because um, it is okay to not be okay but what isn't okay is to, to be alone um, and so that's just kind of me and, and follow it in a nutshell. And um, I'm just very thankful to, to be given this opportunity to, to share with you guys. Um, there's a lot more, but you know, I'll just keep it short, but uh, you know, thank you guys. So much more from Beth and from Zach and we all were very well aware one hour will not be long enough and hey, why does it have to be one hour? Let's please keep this conversation going. Lexi has put up on the screen the way to further connect with Zach. I want to read a couple of comments here.